I've said it before and I'll say it again. We used to live in the big old city of Sydney. We had a big house, big cars, big jobs, big bills, and we were totally over it. So we packed up and we sold up and we moved to beautiful, tropical, far north Queensland. And today I'm going to take you on a full tour of our self-sufficient property. Hi, I'm Debbie and welcome to Vintage Food Farm. We are going to go on a tour of our whole property. We are going to look at the fruit tree areas. We're going to look at the water tanks, at the shed. We're going to have a walk through the veggie garden and I'm going to show you the whole chicken setup. And we're going to finish up where I show you what we have on our veranda. So I'll start by showing you the house. So this is an old 1980s house, very basic, very unrenovated. Um, but very, very comfortable and a beautiful place to live. This is sort of our growing seedling zone. Um, so we have some pots in. Those ones happen to have avocado seeds. These are papayas. So you can see we've got hundreds of papayas here that I'll break up and put into bigger pots. And then we've got some... Uh, these are calamansi seeds in those pots and so on and so on. So this is just where we get everything growing. That's some dragon fruit cuttings and kangkong and passion fruit. And these ones here are the Tongan spinach or the abika, abika most people call it. So our block has a gentle slope on both sides. So the house sits up on top of the block and then it gently slopes down on one side and slopes down on the other side. And that's where all the fruit trees are. So all of these fruit trees we planted when we first moved in and if you saw the first property tour you'll see how much this mango tree has grown in just probably five months. But all down this area here, this is a, this is a calamansi tree that we grew from seed from our calamansi tree that we have over on the other side of the block and that's already this size. Calamansi is just such a beautiful fruit. Um, just to mix calamansi juice with soy sauce is the best dipping sauce ever. It's so good. And you can use calamansi for anything that you would use a lemon or a lime for. It's really beautiful. So here we've got an egg fruit tree. We've got more mango trees. There's probably a hundred fruit trees on the block. You can see down the back there is bananas. We've got kaffir lime. We've got lime trees, lemon trees. Uh, durian, jackfruit, we've got ice cream bean, we've got uh, star fruit, we've got, we've got avocados, we've got a tropical pear, um, we've got lots of weird stuff that half the time I forget. All of our fruit trees, look at the size of this one, that's a Rolina. So I think that was about probably a metre and a half, two metres when we did the last video and now it is probably five metres tall. Just crazy. Everything grows so fast in the tropics, it is incredible. So there's all passion fruit all through that bush. So that's a lemon tree. There's a kaffir lime. So if you do a lot of Thai cooking, it's a great idea to grow a kaffir lime tree. More bananas, more bananas, more mangoes, jackfruit. We've got a lemon myrtle. Lemon myrtle is the most beautiful fragrance ever. It is like a cross between, it's sort of like a lemongrassy, eucalyptusy flavour, and you can use it in so many things. It's often used in um, cosmetics and skincare. And you can even make like an Australian version of a Thai curry where you use the lemon myrtle leaves instead of um, Thai basil. Really yummy. So you can see here there's a beautiful big cluster of banana plants. This here is the weed that takes over everything here. It's called Singapore Daisy and it's a noxious weed. But if you have a look here, we'll have to do something about it because it's actually going to kill this, which is a small tamarind tree. So we'll have to clear out this Singapore Daisy. So you can see here we have a beautiful bunch, just a little bunch of bananas. And this is the flower. And we really should have cut this flower off a little bit sooner because you can see how long that stem goes for. 
So Tim is going to cut off the banana flour and we are going to feed it to the chickens. And Tim is going to feed that to the chickens later. So yeah, lots of different fruit trees down here. And then also the canopy is really a whole lot of tropical native rainforest trees. Some more bananas coming up. With all of our fruit trees, we have to put a wire surround um, until the tree gets taller than the wallabies or the wallabies will eat everything to the ground. So this is a custard apple tree. And this here is another weed, but it's really interesting. And it's called sensitive weed. And when you touch it, it closes. What do they call it, Malaysia? In Malaysia, they call it shy weed. Shy weed, yeah. Hello, Lexi. What you doing? So wherever we walk around the block, Lexi will find a ball and bring it to us so that um, we can throw it for her. All down the front of the block here, that's another mango tree. You can see all the new shoots on that. And then all through here, there are different fruit trees, cassava. Um, we've got a lot of yams. And then down the front of the block is a heap more bananas. So we went and got a load of mill mud, which Tim is now getting out of the cart and putting into the gorilla cart. And we will use that to pot up some more um, plants. Some of which we'll sell and some of which we will plant and some we will give away. Look at that beautiful mill mud. So yes, we have too many fruit trees and yes, we're gonna plant some more. So Tim is going to go now and plant two durian trees and an avocado tree. And the avocado tree, we actually grew that from a seed. So the reason that we end up with so many fruit trees is because everything, every time I buy something that has seeds that will grow, like an avocado or a mango, um, hodge plums, calamansies, you name it, anything that's got a seed I end up planting and we end up with more and more fruit trees. We didn't grow the durians from seed though. My son bought me those for my birthday. Um, so that was a good birthday present. So one year ago, that was a seed from a avocado that we bought at Rusty's Markets in Cairns. Pretty cool. So that's the front of the block. Lots of fruit trees and still planting more. So now we will make our way up. Oh, we'll go over here next. So these are hanging baskets of dragon fruit and they do have a lot of weeds in them. You can see there, doing really well. So you can see that the dragon fruit is actually going over the roof. So I'm hoping that eventually we'll just have an archway of dragon fruit that we can walk through. This is a failure. This is a miniature lime, which we're going to replace. This is passion fruit that Tim planted a few weeks ago, just on wire on the side of the carport. So if you live in the tropics and you have chickens, this is something that we just thought of. So we were paying, um, not a lot of money, but we were buying uh, hay straw for the nesting boxes for the chickens. But now we're just going to cut down all the guinea grass that grows everywhere up here. And I will chop that up into little pieces and that will become the bedding for the nesting boxes for free and we get rid of the guinea grass at the same time. So this is our driveway underneath all this beautiful rainforest. 
rainforest slash bush. It's not as rainforesty as somewhere like Karanda, so I just call it rainforest slash bush. You can see along the edge of the bush, there's actually turmeric growing. So we have turmeric growing all through the garden beds and it's growing in the bush as well. I didn't plant that, I don't know where it came from, but it's there. Here's another little cluster of bananas. These ones probably don't get enough water, but they're still doing okay. These are our four water tanks, which fill up every wet season and get us through to the next wet season easily. So as well as the four rainwater tanks, we also have bore water. And bore water is a setup where we have a bore pump that's inside the granny flat. And then we have our bore, which is a pipe, which is 35 meters long that goes down into the ground. Um, and then the bore pump sucks up the water. And then we use that water to water our gardens, our fruit trees, our veggie garden. I'll show you what it looks like. So that's the actual bore. And then that has a pipe that goes down 35 meters. So if we ever did run out of uh, rainwater, we still have the bore water. So if we go in from the water tanks, we have our shed and another carport. This is the most beautiful old shed. It is a dumping ground and it is a mess. Um, so just ignore that because we haven't gotten to the shed yet, but I'll show you inside. So you can see here the back opens. So you can drive a car in this way or lawnmower. And then it is huge. So one day we will get some good shelving in here and we'll sort it all out. But until then, you can see here, the old guy who used to live here did a lot of carpentry, made furniture and that. So this was his tool hook wall thingy. And the windows are so beautiful. I should say shutters. And they're just held open with a piece of wood. And then they've got these colour bond shutters that are just pivoted on a bolt or a screw. Really cool. So Tim's just opened this one and you can see out the back is just completely bush. And the chicken wants to mow the lawn. What are you doing in here? What are you doing in here? You can't drive a lawn mower. See you later. The original owner said that they didn't have stairs there, they had Besser blocks and they'd had them there for 30 years. So if they were good enough for them, they're good enough for us. So then we come into the carport and up the back of the carport is this area, which is another storage area where we store just old bricks and pots and firewood. And then here, this is our liquid compost setup. So we have the big IBC containers. And then usually Tim will bring over any scraps or waste that the chickens don't eat each day. And we put it into, it's very gross. It actually doesn't stink as much as what you would think for what's in there. But basically we fill it up with water, we add heaps of garden waste and scraps and eggshells, all sorts of things in there. And then it all just rots away. You can see it's up to, I think that's the level that it's up to. And then this is the bucket and we turn the tap on. Okay. <sighs> 
So that is really concentrated. So then we'll mix that with water and we'll put it on all of the fruit trees and we'll also put it on the veggies in the garden. This is where my son lives, which is a really cute old school little granny flat. This garden is completely overgrown. If you watched the last property tour, um, I talked about how we we're going to try and outgrow the weeds. Um, and that sort of is working and sort of not as well. So I think it needs more time, um, but we need to give it a good cut back and tidy up, which we have not done. So you can see here, this is the betel leaf that I'm hoping will grow. Um, that there needs to get out real quick, that's lantana. And then we have Queensland arrowroot, so you can eat the root of that and it's quite a pretty flower. We have a frangipani tree. This is all sweet leaf or siamanis, which is a beautiful green to put in soups and curries. And then this is a guava tree. And then over here, this is the tree that I thought for the first two years was a lychee tree. Which a lot of you pointed out to me was not a lychee tree, it was actually a longan tree, which was 100% correct because we ended up getting a truckload of longans. And then we have a whole heap of mango trees. Over here we have another guava and cassava. That is an elderflower tree there. It doesn't seem to have many leaves at the moment, but you can maybe see right up the top there, it's got some elderberries. And we've got sugarcane. There's lots of this perennial basil. Mm. This is a olive tree. And olives really shouldn't grow here, but it's doing really well. So that's very exciting. So this is our fire pit. This is where we spend a lot of family gatherings. So all of the ash from all of the wood that we burn here and all of the wood that we burn here is just stuff that has literally fallen off the trees. Um, as soon as it falls off Tim will drag it over into the wood pile and then once it dries out a bit he'll get the chainsaw and chop it up so that's why we have so much wood ready to go in the shed. Um, and then all the ash that's left on the ground here he'll put into the gorilla cart and then he will take up to the veggie garden. You're hot. So that's all mango trees. And then we have some bananas down the end. So a few months ago, we planted a ton of passion fruit on all the fences around the chicken run. Um, but there's still passion fruit growing down on these mango trees. So I'll show you that. Look at that. That is so pretty and so yummy. And you can see how many there are in there. So with this passion fruit vine, any that grow on the outside of the leaves, the cockatoos will see and eat. But the ones that grow underneath, they, they don't seem to bother. Um, so there's still quite a few passion fruit that will get off of this. Have a look at that. That is so yummy. And of course, we could plant those seeds and we would end up with even more passion fruit vines mm. good so good mm. so good so I think in total we would have what 20 passion fruit vines yeah. planted yep. yeah about 20 passion fruit vines planted and they are a really really quick thing to grow um, for immediate fruit and the chickens eat them as well so that's really good beyond this fence is still our land but we fenced it off here so that we wouldn't have to um, clear any of the bush so that the wallabies and all the wildlife have got their space as well. But you can see here all the Queensland arrowroot that's coming up. 
So behind this mango tree here, I'll show you, is Gelangal. And this is what's really exciting. I'll just, there's curlews. They're native, they're little baby curlews. They live on the block. This is really exciting. Just a couple of months ago, my daughter came for a walk down to the back of the block and she found two jackfruit trees, which since have doubled in size. And there's two of them in there. And there's some turmeric. Again, just growing in the bush. And then more cyamanus or sweet leaf. So it's really a case that all the stuff that we've planted is just starting to naturalize through everything, which is the way I want it to be because it's so much easier to grow like that. Look at these little curlews. Hello. Goodbye. So this is our papaya patch that we've just planted. And then over here, we have a, oh, this is a lemon tree. And you can see it's got heaps of new shoots. So I'm hoping we get lemons. There's a caterpillar. And then we have some bananas and we have a calamansi tree, which has finished fruiting. So last calamansi just up there. So this is a soursop tree, huge tree. And in here, if we have a look, you will see we have a soursop growing. And this is a grapefruit tree that we just got two huge baskets of grapefruit off of. And we made a heap of grapefruit juice and also some grapefruit ice cubes so that we can put them in our drinks. So that's all the fruit trees. Um, there's heaps and heaps of them that I haven't shown you, but you get the gist. A lot of fruit trees at the front of the block, a lot of fruit trees at the back of the block. And now I will take you and show you the vegetable garden. So just before we go to the veggie garden, I'll show you this up the back. This is the creepiest place ever, but I'll show you. So if you follow this path into the bush, this is the scariest old water tank. Are you turning it on? Why? Why not? If there's anything in it. So it's got a roof with a downpipe that goes into this big welded water tank. And I believe they used to use it to get water to their horses. You can see how beautiful this bush is. Rainforest slash bush. And it is like 10 degrees cooler or more in the bush than what it is out there. So over there is the neighbor's horse paddock. Really pretty. So still on the way to the veggie garden, I promise. But we just want to show you this sugar cane. So Tim cut this bit off yesterday, was it? Yeah. And it's got all the little sugar cane plants coming off of this big one. So we're gonna lay that on the ground so that then it gets roots and grows all this sugar cane. That tastes really, really good. So Tim's just laid that down on the ground there so it grows up, but you can see how much of this beautiful, just stunning sugar cane there is growing here. It's so tropical and so pretty. So we're heading towards the veggie garden and I'll just show you, this is the pineapple garden. So even though, so these plants here are all native palms that have grown from the seeds that have dropped from this beautiful palm tree. So I'm going to leave them growing so that the pineapples are growing on the bottom. And then when these palms grow up, it'll provide a little bit of shade and then we also have um, papayas growing here. We've got a truckload of sawtooth coriander and you can see here that is starting to spread and that will not let any weeds through. So all of this is the coriander going to seed. That's the sawtooth coriander down there. And then eventually that will 
leave no room for any grass or weeds. So this is our tropical raised garden bed vegetable garden and we grow so much food in here. We grow all of our vegetables and herbs and a lot of fruit and because we're in the tropics it is so easy to grow and we get more food than we can possibly need. If you've watched some of the other videos, you'll know that this trellis did have cucumelons on it. So that was totally covered in cucumelons. And then we had a really, really hot day and they died. But um, they started to come back. And then I decided that because we have so many cucumelons on the other trellises as well, that we're going to give this trellis back to large tomatoes. got some pumpkins and some papaya. Tim's just about to pick another papaya. There's a beautiful papaya. And then there's another one. So just a little bit green but they'll ripen up on the bench. Or we can have green papaya salad. So just as we pass I'll show you here this amazing plant. If you saw the video on wing beans, there are so many wing beans. It is crazy and they are so yummy. They're a cross between asparagus and a snow pea and they are beautiful. Look at the size of that one. And then along this fence, which we only planted a few months ago, we have all of these beautiful passion fruit. And we're really hoping that because it's closer to the house that the cockatoos don't eat any, but we'll see. So that's the veggie garden and I'll show you more veggie garden in individual videos. I've done some already and I'll do some more, but it's such a great thing to have a veggie garden in the tropics because you save so much money and the fruit and the vegetables and the herbs that you grow taste so amazing. These are the little baby guinea fowl, Keats. And then over here, these are actually wild guinea fowl that came to live. So they've now been here for a few weeks. They're not as tame as the others. And they live in the trees and come down in the morning for food. So Tim's cut open the papaya. Look at that, that is so beautiful. And now he is going to feed it to some very hungry chickens. So this is why we grow so many papaya and so many fruit trees because even if we have more than we can eat, the chickens will eat it and make us beautiful eggs, super eggs. So this is the way to the chicken coop and the chicken runs. So basically this has a gate here. That's more wing beans. And that is a loofah flower. So we've got loofahs and wing beans growing wild on this fence. So this is the larger chicken run. And we've got a lot of fruit trees in here. We've got papaya, we have coconuts, we have mangoes. We have figs. These are the durian that Tim just planted. So that's all the large run, we call it. 
So that's all fenced off so that if we do have to lock the chickens up, which we never do, they always free range on the whole block. And then in here, we have an electric fence. The electric fence really works well at keeping the pythons out. Whenever we have a python, it's because that fence is broken. So the pythons come in to eat usually the baby keats or baby chicks. And they sit up on top of this roof here. And then they come down in the day and wait in the coop to hopefully get locked in at night. And that's when they strike. But that's the chicken coop. You can see that we have the waterers. We have the feeder. A couple of eggs in there. And there's some eggs in this nesting box. There's a chicken laying an egg. That's Moringa the chicken. So in this coop are all of our original chickens and they are just hens, there is no rooster and we use those eggs. But in here is what we bought a few weeks ago, well a week ago really, but in here is our new little friends. So these are the cutest little bantams and this, say hello, this is Rotty the rooster. Hello, how are you? He's so pretty. So this is their coop. So again, just the cheap shelving. And this is a cheap hardware store chicken coop. And having said that, it says it's a chicken coop, but we had to modify it quite a bit to make sure that it was snake proof. Um, so we had to block up a lot of holes. We had to put in a wire base so that nothing can dig in and make a hole where a snake can get in. And this tree above us is a starfruit tree and it drops hundreds of starfruit that the chickens eat. And it is also a python hotel because that's where they hide out. And this is the hen who hasn't got a name yet but they're both duckwing leghorns. And he is the sweetest, quietest rooster you've ever met. So he does crow, but it's, it's not even as loud as a chicken. It's just like a, one of those whistle things that you blow out. It's quite pathetic. And he just goes, and then that's it. So this is their run. You can see the pit game phantoms there sunbathing or not. And then we've got some coconut palms, some papaya. Forget what that flower's called, but it's edible for the chickens. We have a couple of seats so that when we want to hand feed the chickens, we can. And more papaya. And then we just used an old gate and put up a fence in between the two coops because we don't want these roosters to get in near these hens because I don't want to eat fertilized eggs. And then in between here, we've got a doggy door so that we can open that up and let these chickens through to the veggie garden, but we can restrict how long they spend in there um, so that they don't eat everything. So these chickens don't understand why they're not allowed in this part now. And then we've also got all of the chicken food lined up there. Chicken food and grit and diatomaceous earth And you'll see with the coop that we've got a lot of vertical space. So, so that you can get away with more chickens in a smaller coop. If you do vertical space, then it's plenty of room. They only sleep in there at night and then they come out and free range all day, every day. Someone has been eating chicken food. So that's it. That's the run, the large run. You can see the vegetable garden at the back there. And that works out really well because when I'm doing any work in the veggie garden, I can throw all the scraps over either into one of the two chicken runs or into the large run and all the chickens can eat it. These are our guineas. These are all the tools that I use to clean out the coop or cut up bananas or banana leaves or banana trunk. There's the scoop for their food.
I'm going to take you up on the deck and show you where we sit to eat most of our meals and where we cook and where we plan our holidays. So that's our tool cupboard that we just keep stuff in that we need to be able to access easily. A nesting box that we put up here so that um, the chickens can lay close to where I can get the eggs and I don't have to walk all the way to the coop. Our pineapples, the tops off of our pineapples and we put them in water, grow roots on them and then plant them in the garden. These are West Indian lime seeds that have just sprouted. So that's very exciting. These are hodge plums growing. We've got some just little buttercup flowers. Tree lettuce seedlings. If I put the tree lettuce seedlings down with the other plants, the chickens will eat them down to the pot and eat all the dirt as well. Kitchen set up. So we've just got all of our pots and pans, our gas burner with our cast iron for steak and stuff. We've got our barbecue. So really simple setup, but it's everything we need and we really prefer to. This is where Tim and I sit to have our coffee in the morning. This is our sprinkler system you can see going right now. Because it hasn't rained in quite a few days. Accessing it via his mobile phone. We can set that on a timer so that when we go on holidays, the sprinkler can come on and we don't need to do anything. We've got a day bed for chilling. And then over here is a larger table so that if people come for dinner or lunch or whatever. The reason the laptop is on the table is because Tim is planning our holiday to Cambodia and Vietnam. So we have been to Cambodia and Vietnam quite a few times before um, and we're going to Sien Reap and um, Hoi An, Da Nang. Is that it? That's it. Yep. So we have eaten some amazing food there and we're going to do some videos there. So if you know of anywhere that we should go near Sien Reap in Cambodia or near Hoi An, Da Nang area in Vietnam, let us know. Um, we usually go out and visit a lot of farms um, and look at how they grow things out there and we eat a lot of food, really good food. And we know what we love to eat in Vietnam and Cambodia, but if you do have any suggestions on anything we should eat or anywhere we should go, let us know. This is it. That is the end of the tour of our self-sufficient property in beautiful tropical far north Queensland, Australia. If you feel like it, and only if you feel like it, like and subscribe. But most importantly, stay calm in the farm.